So I hope you are still with me and this video is here. <laughs> in this video we will create our first material and in fact we create a metal material. So when I start texturing I start painting the textures or layering the textures how it's built in real life. And most of the time it's it has an underlying material, so as an example uh, metal and some paint over it. And that's how I prefer to work as much as I can the realistic way. So we can rename it here to metal and we can jump here into it. So here we have the image manager and we have a few textures. As I said, they are in the files which you can download here, the textures, source, and here a few ones which I gathered in the internet, which are free to ship. So we want to create a metal one. I think this one can be interesting. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, we definitely want that. Um, here this one looks interesting as well. Maybe this one, this one. And maybe this one as a breakup. Let's select it and drag and drop it here into our image manager. This will take a short amount of time, so Mari will load in the project file and it also saves it with the project file. So here we need to do a few things. So here we have the properties of the texture and here we have to define the scalar data when it's something which is a mask or a bump map or roughness and stuff like that. So here this one is definitely a scalar one. And this one of course as well. Let's make it here quickly. A bit bigger. Scalar. Scalar. Here double click. Let's see how it looks like. Yeah. Let's go with this one here. So we don't need to take here the scalar one because I want to use it as a color map. So here in the node graph, we are here inside of the material. We can switch here from black to white because it's a metal one. And autosave is kicking in, which is actually a good thing. So enable autosave. And here we have a metal. But we want to drive here the shader with a texture. You can simply drag and drop it here into the viewport, I have viewport into the node graph, and hook up the spaghetti. And that's how it looks like. A bit blurry, I guess. We can tile it. Double click on it and repeat it maybe three times. Let's go even more. Come on. Let's go for five. We are crazy today. Five. Oh, look at that. That looks a lot better. So we don't need color one anymore. Great. And here we have the roughness. For the roughness, we can look what we have here. Maybe... Yeah, let's go with this one. So when I do roughness stuff, I still keep here my base, base color. So I can here define my my base roughness with this one here. Oh, it's barely, it's barely visible here. It's the same color like the UI. So I can define how, how glossy I want to have it and layer all the textures on top of that. You can see that in a minute. So I want to have it a bit more on the glossy side. Not fully perfect glossy. Yeah, maybe some something like that. Press OK. Select the node and press M on the keyboard for merge node. So here, image manager, drag and drop again, hook it up, and I guess we want to tile it a bit more, double click on it, let's go for three times, I think that's cool. Okay, but now we want to keep our set, previously set um, data here. And for that we can double click here on the merge node and we can switch to overlay. 
So it will keep all the mid gray values how they are. Or no, let, let's let's switch to screen. So on screen, all the black areas are gone. It won't be shinier as before, while all the white parts will stay here. That's maybe a bit much here, so we can dial it a bit back. I think something like that is cool. I mean, that's up to you. You can also say, hey, this is pretty nice what we had here on normal. I want to stay with that. I just want to show you here, you have different options to create your your um, shader. So you can also say, hey, I really like these details here, but I don't want to have it that strong. We can dial it back here a bit on the opacity. So we have now a mix of our base and our texture. I think, yeah, that's, that's cool for now. And here on the bump. So let's go here. I think for the bump one, we can use the roughness texture here as well. M on the keyboard. And pipe it in here into the over. And here it's important to have it on... Oh, double click. It was still there. Roughness one. Here it's important to have it on overlay. So it will, as I said, keep the mid gray values while the black is pushing in and the white is coming out. So I think these scratches are the wrong way around. We can insert here an invert node, tab on the keyboard, invert, and let's have it here in between. Yeah, oh, we have here a stroke. Yeah, looks looks a bit better here. I like that so far. Let's have it a bit more organized to have a clean note graph. It's important. Stuff can go pretty fast, very crazy here. But we want to have it simple here on this tutorial. I think that's cool for our base metal here. And we want to continue on the next material. But before we do that, we want to insert here a new multi-channel merge node. So we can pipe it up here into the base, here the base as well. And we can use a bake point. So you may think what the hell is a bake point, but bake points are very important here, Mario. So as I said, stuff can go pretty fast, pretty crazy. And bake points are a super way to hold your project um, performance wise on a good level. So let's type in here bake point. We need a multi channel bake point because we are here multi channel setup. 4K, um, 8 bit is fine because we don't have any 16 bit stuff inside it. Okay. And here we have it. So it will take everything with what's coming in here and flatten it down to one node here, or in this case, three textures or no, four, four textures. We have the metal, this is one. So we can select here the output we want to bake, so it detects automatically, hey, we have attached here four inputs, do you want to bake this? Yes, bake active. And I like to do that uh, after every material I have created, so as I said, it will be better for the performance, so sometimes you will have meshes with over 100 UDIMs, and that's a lot of data to handle for the GPU, and you want to have it as organized and optimized as possible. So here we are back and it has it baked and we have a fluid viewport, which is pretty cool. And we see us in the next video with the next material.